all the green around here is cord grass. Um, so it's kind of dominated the scene in the salt marsh because it's specially adapted to the varying levels of salinity and then also the high and the low tide that we see here in the marsh. It's a great place for a lot of small marine life. Um, it's an important protection spot for them. It acts like a nursery so that they can grow up and move on to that next stage of their adult lives and move on to other areas of our coastal region. We're kayaking at low tide. Um, as you can see, the water is very low in some places, exposing all of our beautiful sandbars we have here in our marsh. Um, when we do come out here at these times, we always try to take a chance to stop and explore. This is a great time to see some of our oysters hanging out along the sides. There are a few areas of bare sediment in the marsh where the marsh is definitely eroding. You can see where the banks are starting to fall into the creek. And these are some spots where we'd like to restore wild oysters so that they can help protect the shoreline and prevent erosion. We want to track the success of our restoration project. So one of our interns is comparing restored reefs to wild oyster reefs and bare sediment areas. She's keeping track of numbers of oysters, their sizes, and the different other species using these structures as habitat, such as crabs and ribbed mussels. It's a ribbed mussel. And here are our oysters. And some of these oysters are really small, but these are alive. All of these are oysters. These are little babies. And they're growing on the old shells, so sort of like a coral reef. The oysters will form a big reef growing on top of each other that forms a structure that's really important habitat for the marsh.